The question is, what do you wear when you're shooting for photography or cinematography or, or videography? Um, I'm going to try and break it down just a little bit, but of course the, the real natural answer to that question is it really depends on a number of factors. Um, I get involved in both photography and also filmmaking both here and also abroad. So this is a question that some of you have asked and also we often ask as a team. Um, my clothing changes totally depending on the nature of the shoot and there are a number of factors that come into effect when making that type of decision. Firstly, do you want to be visible? Sometimes when you're working on a crew or as a shooter, you may naturally start to think about black and wearing black. And there are times when that 100% makes sense. It may be that you don't want to stand out in a crowd. You want to kind of hide into the shadows and, and you don't want to stick out. And black can be a color that works very, very well for that. Particularly when you're working in low key environments uh, and there may be a chance that you would be visible in a wide angle of a shot. But because of the lighting that's there, when you're wearing black, you fall into the shadows and as a result, you're not then seen. Um, so black can be an absolute lifesaver. Uh, when we were shooting wedding events, um, we would often definitely lean ourselves towards shooting um, wearing black, particularly if we were shooting video. But that's not always the best way to go. But another reason just to break it down as to why black can sometimes be a good, a good thing to wear is like me, you may find yourselves on your knees. Um, you may find yourselves lying down to try and get the shot for photo or video and the floor's not clean. So wearing something that's black is going to mean that you remain looking pristine for much longer than if I was to lie down wearing this white shirt. I'd come up and uh, I wouldn't be too pleased about how I would look. So sometimes the colours we wear being darker can really help um, on a shoot. There are those times when I don't want to simply blend into the background. And this is sometimes really a matter of thinking about your own personal brand or thinking about how much control you need to have on set, on location. When I used to shoot weddings as a photographer, I didn't want to hide into the background. I wanted to make sure that I was there as a vocal mouthpiece. Um, I was also involved in helping to direct the, um, the, the crowd that were there and I was doing crowd management. So I would want to make sure that people would notice me and they would see me. Another thing is I wanted to make sure that I was memorable. So when I would walk into um, an environment where I was shooting an event that might have 500 people, it could be a corporate event as well, I didn't want to be someone that would just disappear into the background because I wanted to be noticed for the right reasons. Because I knew that we were good as a team at what we did and I felt comfortable in my skin shooting away. And if people were to watch and to analyze what it is that we were doing, I knew that they would be impressed and the aim would be that they come and they take a business card. If I was dressed in a way that I would blend into the background, maybe they wouldn't notice us, wouldn't come and give me that business card. I also want to sometimes make sure that as a creative, people believe and understand that I'm creative or the team is creative. So therefore, it might be that you make a decision like I did at times to dress in a more creative way. So for me, the way I tend to do that, my own personal Simeon style is I've got loads of different colors of trousers, right? Um, in lots of different colors. and. It just means that I stand out just a little bit and it's always a balance of play. It's about feeling comfortable in your own skin, essentially. Um, I would also choose outfits that maybe had a particular style. So some used to know me for wearing a waistcoat with a skinny tie. Others used to, I went for a, the Simeon braces stage where I would always wear uh, braces to support the, the, the trousers. Um, and you kind of carve out a style for yourself. It might be that what you end up doing is thinking about your own personal brand and deciding what you would like to look like. What would you expect your client to see? Um, all right, let me give you an example. Um, it's no secret because it used to be published on our website. When we were shooting weddings, the bills ended up going up to, um, we would charge maybe 11,000 pounds thereabouts. That would kind of be a starting point sometimes for our photo and video services. If you were gonna do a consultation or you were gonna have someone or a team who were charging that amount of money present on your shoot, how would you expect that 
person to look. And for me, what I would do is I would imagine that and then I would make that become a reality. Does that make sense? Because that becomes essentially part of your personal brand. It's not about just blending in. It's about creating an experience and a memorable experience. And sometimes your clothing can be the note that makes a big key difference. But I've also had it the opposite way, whereby I've dressed in my kind of designer clothes, looking cool, um, looking the way maybe someone would expect a highly creative person to look. But it wasn't suitable for that environment because I was on the floor. It was, you know, I was wearing a waistcoat um, and I was down in the trenches. And every time I was moving with the camera, I just felt this, this restriction and I was uncomfortable. Or I was more worried about the knees on my trousers and scuffing them because of the value of my trousers. So I had to also make a bit of a balance. Sometimes that decision comes job by job. I'm going to drop into a couple of scenarios now. So um, myself and Jordan behind the camera, um, we went to Ghana and we were shooting in the northern villages of Ghana and the heat there, Jordan, it was, it was about 40 degrees um, in terms of the heat. Now, I knew 100% that what I had in my wardrobe was not going to suit this type of shooting style. For me, because I'm um, allergic to the sun or being out in the sun for any period of time, um, I'll leave that to, a, to another blog post. It means I need to be essentially covered from head to toe. Ideally, I would be just as Jordan is now. He's in shorts and a t-shirt, but I knew that wouldn't suit me. So what I did is I bought linen trousers that were very, very thin. And I also built and um, bought very long sleeve white shirts that would also reflect the sun and would keep me cool. And a protective hat to keep me going um, and to keep me in the shade and keep that head kind of cool and, and, and correct. Um, so it also worked for the heat, but it looked correct for the environment that I was in. Um, you wouldn't want to go into the northern villages of Ghana wearing some Gucci clothing um, when you are dealing with people that are really there in, in poverty. The aim there is to really to try and fit in as much as possible. We didn't want to draw too much attention to ourselves. We didn't want to stick out as being so different. We were already different enough, all right, coming from the West um, and from developed countries. So there I was dressed for my own protection, but we were also dressed in a way that meant that we wouldn't stick out for the wrong reasons. Does that make sense? Um, footwear, for me, something that's very important, ideally something that is always comfortable um, and that wears very, very well. And that literally just depends on the environment that you're shooting in. Footwear can often be down to a matter of safety, having the correct grip on the floor. And there are some environments where if you're working in factories, beware, you may need to own and have a pair of steel toe cap boots, for example. Um, so footwear can be extremely important. Or if you're in a shoot and, and it's gonna be wet, are you prepared to get those shoes muddy and dirty? Someone asked me the question, um, how is it that, you know, I can, you end up affording um, items of, of clothing? Uh, what I tend to do is I tend to budget a small portion of every shoot toward clothing. So if I was doing, um, let's say if I was shooting weddings, what I would do as a shooter of weddings, I might decide that I don't want to be wearing just black jeans or wanting to wear knee pads on, on my trousers. I, I want to wear something that would stand out and look correct. So what I would end up doing is I would budget, it might be um, 50 pounds or $50 from every single um, wedding that I shot. And then I would might get to the end of a certain period of time, a couple of months or a few months, and I would have a little bit of budget there that was associated with the clothing. And I could go out and I could buy the things that I needed to look the way that I felt. I would need to look and also feel comfortable. So that as I was on a shoot and I would see my knees fading away, I would know that I had it covered and I had it handled. So those are just some of my initial thoughts on clothing for shoots. Um, you may have other ideas and other thoughts. What I'd love you to do, could you please leave your comments in the comment section here on this YouTube video? And um, I really appreciate it 
uh, those of you who have liked this video or others that you've watched. And naturally, if you enjoy getting involved in this type of discussion, would you please subscribe? Um, and if you have any ideas for any future discussions you'd like us to have here on the Simeon Quarry uh, uh, channel, YouTube channel, leave them in the comments below. Thanks a lot.